joined by two panelists, Dustin Schroeder of Full-Time Families and Aaron and Travis of Our Lively Tribe. If you have been following along the past couple of weeks, you know that Joel Holland has also been a panelist with us. And today he is really living that RV life and it let us know that he is without service. So we will be missing him today, but if you would like to check back on any of the previous panels that we have run the past three weeks, you can get lots of input from Joel and he is with the brand Harvest Hosts. If you're viewing right now and you have any questions, either now or throughout the panel, please drop them into the chat box all the way through our panel, and I will get to as many questions as possible, feeding them as they come through, if they're relevant to what we're talking about, or we have some pre-submitted questions that I start with, and then after we get through all of those, I go into our viewer questions. One final little reminder before we get to our panelists, the RV Repair Club, Full-Time Families, Our Lively Tribe, and Harvest Hosts have all collaborated on a free activity sheet bundle to bring on your next road trip. And that bundle includes an RV cookbook, camping meal planning sheets, coloring pages, crossword puzzles, an RV camping guide, and tips for your RV. Simple to download, just click the banner underneath the video player or the link in the description. And uh, we can get into some more details about that free bundle if you have questions about it once we meet our panelists. Here's where I bring them on board. Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. And we are going to say hi first to Aaron and Travis. They are here from Our Lively Tribe. I'm gonna ask for just a quick rundown, anything you would like to bring to light about your brand or what you've been up to as our final panel gets started. Hi, Aaron and Travis. Hi, thanks hi. for having us. Yes, yeah, so I'm Travis. I'm Aaron, and we are uh, Full-time RVers, we live in a renovated fifth wheel and we have four boys and that brought us into our business of RV renovation and we do that full-time and we love it. Yay! Well, it's excellent to have you back for our final panel and we are going to bring in Dustin next. Dustin Schroeder, hi and welcome. Tell us a little bit briefly about you, your brand and anything that you've been up to lately that you would like to uh, start out with. Very cool. Uh, Dustin Schroeder, uh, me and my wife, Nicole, we own Full-Time Families, uh, which Full-Time Families is a group where we all live in our RV and travel full-time. And we meet up as often as we can. Right now, uh, we like to host rallies and events. Right now, we've had a little bit of a challenge with uh, rallies due to the pandemic. However, uh, that's our mission is to really get full-time families that people that travel full-time in their RV, their kids to meet other kids, the parents to meet other parents and just uh, make that community and building the community is what we're all about. Okay, well, welcome to our panelists. And as I said, we are missing Joel Holland today, but go back into the archives on rvrepairclub.com and you'll see some of his input from previous panels. So we're going to dig in right now to some pre-submitted questions that are on our topic for today. And like I said before, if you have a question, please drop it into the chat box. If it's on topic to something we're already talking about, I'll try and slide that in and just tag on. And if it's a brand new topic, please don't, don't feel like you have to hold back. Drop that question in. This is our last panel. We will get to as many questions as possible before we wrap this up. So we're going to get started. Our first question here is, before making a career out of the RV lifestyle, how did you keep up with your previous job while traveling in your RV or living in it full time? I'm gonna send this to Dustin first. So uh, my, my previous job was, uh, I also own and operate some Verizon cell phone stores. So we use that technology to kind of do who uh, manage it from the road. I obviously had key people that, that ran the stores day to day um, I would get involved if there was some type of issue or problem, but uh, I did everything remotely, either on uh, just phone calls or email. <laughs> All right, I'm actually going to tag on before you continue, Dustin, because our very first question that came in is kind of leading into what you were just talking about. Harry is asking if you have suggestions as reputable sources for remote working. Um, so I know that the work camper news people, they, they, they set up a lot of, uh, work campers and I know that they, uh, have lots of, 
uh, I guess, campgrounds and like even Amazon. So lots of different remote places reach out to them for temporary or seasonal workers. So that would be the one that I know of that I would suggest people check. I've never personally worked with them, but uh, I do know a lot of people that have. Okay. I'm going to send this question over to Aaron and Travis. So before making the career out of your RV lifestyle, how did you keep up with your previous job while traveling in your RV or living? And then that tag on from Harry, if you have any suggestion for reputable sources for remote working. So um, we, I had fallen into becoming a photographer full time um, just before we hit the road. So that's what we continue doing. We would go out and travel and then travel back for weddings to photograph. Um, so that is what we did the full year that we were full time traveling. We would just travel back and forth to photograph. And uh, so that's how we were able to get it through it. <laughs> but, um, but all of that really led to, to our lively tribe. The photography just transferred into a growing following and the ability to photograph the trailers that we were we were living in and then building. So, so that's really how it all kind of snowballed for us. Just led right into what you're doing right now. No, awesome. All right, well, let's go right back to Aaron and Travis for our next question here. Do you have any advice for running a business on the road? Um, you can go. <laughs> um, advice for running a business on the road. I think setting work hours is important. When we were traveling, we would make sure that we would have, you know, thousands of pictures to edit for weddings, um, really sticking to setting work hours. I would leave and go to a Starbucks for four hours and just edit. Um, and so it's hard because RV life feels like you're on a vacation, um, but you have to remind yourself, like, you also have a job and you've got work to do. And so, um, setting those work hours really helped us just kind of stay on top of it. I think that's, that's the best. How about so, you? Any advice for running a business on the road? So for me, it's, it's more about uh, having the, the space to be able to work. Sometimes um, I experienced and other people that I've talked to have experienced like noise in the camper, especially with kids doing their thing and doing homeschool. Sometimes finding that space where you're actually able to work what I found has been really uh, helpful for me is uh, we bought one of the clam tents and uh, essentially that's my office when we're, when we're traveling. So I'll set up a, it's like a shade tent, uh, which is an outside office and I will oftentimes work from that. Okay, I'm gonna follow right up on this one and send it back to Dustin first. Did you run into any barriers to getting started with your new career? So there were some barriers you were talking about specific to the RV, but anything you can think of directly related to starting the new career? Um, so uh, the biggest barrier that I ran into was um, being responsible for employees or hiring, sometimes uh, setting up interviews, uh, doing remote interviews or phone interviews is sometimes a lot different than being able to do it face to face was what I was used to. So I guess the biggest, uh, being a business owner, the biggest challenge that I ran into is finding um, employees. And when you do find those candidates, figuring out a way to interview them. So again, Zoom is actually a good option for that so we're on zoom right now getting this panel going <laughs> how about you Aaron and Travis what kind of barriers did you meet uh, as you were getting started in your new career I think our business has ended up needing to overlap um, we we came back um, to settle down for a year to have our fourth son and we realized that we really wanted to jump into RV renovations. And so at the same time, we were still photographing weddings on the weekends. And then he started working full time during the week um, to get this business off the ground. So I think it was just the overlap of business until we could transition into this one full time. Okay, and what is the most important thing that you would say you've done to grow your brand? I'll stay on Aaron and Travis for this one. It, in, in all honesty, it's honesty. <laughs> I mean, our brand is essentially based off of just Aaron and I and who we are and how we live and, and how we uh, are with our kids. So 
ours is truly like being very honest um, and showing a lot of ourselves on Instagram and YouTube. So, yeah. and then, you know, with that comes the trailers and the work. And so people already kind of have a sense of who we are. And then when they see us putting our effort and love into the trailers, I think it kind of is a, just a full circle thing for us. Absolutely. Keep the authenticity going. Mm -hmm. All right, Dustin, how about you? What would you call the most important thing that you've been doing to grow your brand? So uh, I, I was going to say we didn't build our brand. We, uh, we actually uh, bought the company and there was two other families that did most of the growing of the brand. Um, I would say the things that are important to keep the brand going is we love the events. Like we love the rallies. Um, most people that attend the rallies, I mean, that, that's when they meet the most people. And it's really lonely on the road as a, as a traveling family full time. If you don't have some type of event or some type of meeting, you might meet a family here or there, but there's nothing compared to um, get into a rally where there's 40, 50, 60 families that you can network with and they all have those common uh, lifestyles, uh, things that you do. So I, I would say the things that we keep our brand going are those events are very important to us. And, and, and I can touch on Dustin's because we were that family. We traveled for maybe five, six months without really meeting any other families. And then we went to a full-time families rally that happened to be in our hometown and it just like exploded before we knew it we had these lifelong friends that we're still in contact with daily so and for the rest the other the rest of the six months we didn't travel alone like yeah. we traveled with families and it was the best part of it, so. it it really changes how you do this lifestyle and full-time families is you know a big part of that huge so so we can speak to dustin <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Those events sound amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Almost wish that we are back pre-COVID. <laughs> <Be getting laughs> uh, Dustin, I'm going to send this back to you. Uh, you had already mentioned a little bit about a workspace that, that you have thought up and put together. And since your living space is your workspace, how do you keep the two balanced? So if you could elaborate a little bit more. So, um, <laughs> I would argue I've never really found an awesome way to keep work and life balance. Um, I guess the fact that I travel with my family full time in RV is probably the closest I've gotten because we spend a lot of time together. Um, but the reason I'm full time is because I didn't ever find that balance. So I guess for, for the balance part, eh, not my expertise, but as far as the workspace, um, it, if, if you're determined to do it, you can usually make something work. Like I literally bought a tent and I sit in a tent and I make that my office. Um, but there's lots of ways. Like today, I'm actually out in a parking lot talking to you guys. Um, and my laptop set up on the back of my computer. That's why I got the fancy background. So you don't see all this empty parking lot here. So really, uh, I would say be flexible. Um, and sometimes you're working in an environment that you don't always necessarily prefer to work in. But if you're determined to do it, it's pretty easy to get it done. Okay, same question to you, Aaron and Travis. Uh, how do you work with the living space being your workspace and how do you balance the two? When we traveled, it was more editing. And so it was just forcing yourself to sit down at the computer, close your, your door to your, fr your front room and, and edit. But now it's- we, uh, we set it up so that where we live, is where I, our shop is, so I'm able to to kind of get out of the get out of the trailer and go right into our uh, our shop where we build the trailers, um, which is only about 50 feet away, which is incredible. But we we set our our lifestyle to look like this so that we could be together all the time. Um, I don't miss any of Rivers. Or that's our little boy's first moments, his first walking, all of those things. I'm just a stone's throw away for. So we really negotiated life to, to look like that for ourselves. And there are sacrifices though. I mean, we're living in a smaller, you know, tr trailer and, uh, and those are the sacrifices you make to be with your family. Just like Dustin said, before he was living this life, there wasn't a balance. He was working. And that's similar for all of us until we change that. We, I was the same way working until you shift it and realize 
this is more important. So make work line up with this life. So that's what we really did. Okay, well, I am gonna send it right back to both of you, uh, Aaron and Travis. What are some ways that you made your RV feel like a home? So when we first decided to travel full-time in our RV, we didn't want to move into an RV that was just brown and felt like an RV. And I had said, I just wanted to feel cozy and like a home. And so we didn't know of anybody renovating or painting RVs. So we just like dove in and did it. And um, it was one of the coziest spaces that we ever traveled in. We painted the walls, we put in new flooring, um, we took out the dinette and the couch and we put in a couch from Ikea that had a ton of storage and Travis built a table and a bench because that was more practical for us with some chairs. Um, and then we just added our own touch. Everybody has their own personality. So when you go into somebody's home, it feels like their home and their space with their touch on it. And we did the same in our RV. Uh, we just made it our own space. Okay, I'm going to send it to Dustin. Uh, same question. What did you do to make your RV feel like a home? So, um, I don't know that we did a whole lot. Um, I, I, like I said, we were very specific on the floor plan um, that we wanted to get. So, that would probably be the closest thing. We made sure that all of our uh, family had a uh, I guess, sleeping space. Uh, and we didn't want to make sure that we made a table into a bed every day. Um, so I don't know that we did a whole lot of other than just maybe some decoration things to make it feel more like home. All right, I do have a few more pre submitted questions that I'm going to finish my way through, but I wanted to remind everybody out there watching, if you have a question, please add it to the chat box and we'll start to get to those questions pretty quickly here. Uh, also, please don't feel restricted to the topic that we're on in this panel today. If there's anything that was missed in the previous panels that you watched that you would like to get that question in, feel free to drop it uh, and I will ask as many questions as we can get through for the rest of the panel. Uh, this is our final panel. So it is the fourth of four. So this is gonna be our last one for this series that we're running right now. So last chance to get in any questions you might've been hanging on to, please feel free to drop them. So that's my plug for questions. We're gonna dive right back into some of our pre-submitted questions here. Our next question, I'm gonna to send to Dustin first. Um, and this is pretty simple. Uh, we've talked a little bit about this before, but what are some RV living essentials that you couldn't live without? So decorating or just things that make life easier? Um, I think my favorite thing which I guess isn't essential but it kind of is to us is our solar system uh, our solar and our batteries that that has been the biggest difference maker for us traveling because then we can travel whether we're in a campground or we're uh, boondocking somewhere in a desert uh, it allows us the flexibility to be able to go off grid for multiple days um, sometimes even two weeks uh, without any problem so I, I would say that's probably our biggest one. Um, there's lots of little things like uh, different tools that, that, that we'll use or um, different levelers, uh, those types of little things, but uh, solar is definitely the biggest. Okay, how about you, Aaron and Travis? What would you consider to be essential, something you can't live without? There's a lot of little things, I would say, that really make RV living comfortable and easier um let's name them <laughs> <laughs> i think i think the biggest that comes to mind is a fresh water system and whether that's fresh drinking water so whether that's a berkey or um i know that there's units you can put under your sink to give you fresh drinking water because you never know where you're going to be in campgrounds their water is not always reliable depending on where you are and we live in southern california and so we definitely don't drink the water out of the faucet um and so we have a berkey that we use and it is you don't have to worry about making sure you pick up water you're not wasting plastic by buying plastic bottles um and that was one of our best investments is because we know that we always have fresh drinking water we use it for coffee we use it for cooking um i would say that has been a game changer for us 
And I, I think like Dustin touched on uh, a good variety of tools. I think that that is like pretty essential. You never know what's going to break on you. Um, so having a good variety of tools and kind of knowing what to look for um, in these rigs while you're traveling for leaks and things like that, that's, that's pretty essential um, and really important if you're out there and something goes wrong. Okay, I'm gonna tag on to these essential needs here. Cindy uh, put a question through in the chat box and wants to know how do you deal with Wi-Fi needs for working on the road? So working, schooling, anything like that, you'll need Wi-Fi for. Uh, Aaron and Travis, how's that Wi-Fi work for you? We are definitely not tech people. So we reach out to friends and family for advice on that. When we traveled full time, we paid for um, internet through unlimited bill. I don't know if that's still a thing, but we probably overpaid for it, but it was always reliable and we always had internet. And that was important um, working on the road for us and our kids homeschooling and using the internet online. Um, so we had done that. Now we just go through our cell phone carrier and we have a hotspot that we use. And that seems to work for us too. Okay, Dustin, how about you? How do you handle the Wi-Fi needs while you're on the road? So um, as you can tell today, I'm not having the best luck uh, with my Wi-Fi. So we all struggle with that. Um, but uh, I use cellular. Um, I have both AT&T and Verizon that I use. Um, and I try to use the one that has the strongest bars. I might have picked wrong. I'm on my AT&T right now and it's not been perfect. Uh, but it was the one that had the most bars, so that's the one I connected to. Uh, but cellular is actually what I use. I don't use uh, campground Wi-Fi very often. It's almost always my cell phones. Okay, uh, now Susie has a question that came in, and both of our panelists here today have families, but of different ages, so this will be a great one to have you both answer. Susie's asking, what is your favorite weekend kids activity? She needs some suggestions. Dustin, I'm going to start with you, if you could tell us some good weekend kids activities. So I guess that would depend on the age of your kids. Uh, my, my kids are a little bit older, uh, range from 12 to 18. I have three of them. But for us, we, we really love uh, educational type things. So we'll do a lot of national parks. We'll do a lot of museums. Uh, we'll do a lot of like factory tours. That's actually probably our favorite. Um, I don't know how many factories are still doing public tours, but to go and, and, and tour um, a factory. In fact, Burton Snowboard Club in Vermont was probably one of our favorite and we're not snowboarders. So we know nothing about it, but it was really educational to go through the, um, the tour and learn more about it. So those are some of the things that we really enjoy. So Aaron and Travis, I think your children are a little bit younger. So what are some of your uh, weekend activities that you could recommend? So our kids are the opposite of Dustin's. Our kids range from one to 12 <laughs> and <laughs> And so, but our, it, it's very similar. Um, national parks, hikes, um, anything educational, museums were a big one. On weekends, I loved finding farmer's markets. I think that was my favorite. And farmer, farmer's markets are free and really kid-friendly. They're not free mm -hmm. if you spend money, but, um, but they're really kid-friendly. And then um, just parks, every um, city, offers parks and splash pads or community pools. Um, that was a big one for us was finding the community pool and um, using those. I think that we really took advantage of, there's these really great, amazing parks. And actually I have a friend's husband who builds them. And so they're all over. I know Seattle has one right by the Space Needle and they are elaborate, insane parks. And so looking up things that are different in each city for your kids to do, there's so much out there. Well, Susie did uh, feed in a little comment here. She's got overlap. Her kids are 10 to 14. So maybe pulling a little bit from each of your suggestions. Uh, I hope that's helpful to you, Susie, and anyone else out there looking for weekend kid activities. Uh, we're going to move on to Rob's question here in the chat box. When full-time RVing, where do you stay? Do you stay at RV parks or do you usually stay at one location for very long? So I'll send this to Aaron and Travis right away. Uh, so that's one thing with, with uh, all of the different families that do this. Some people really enjoy staying in RV parks, um, and some people really don't. And I'm we're one that don't. So when we traveled, we really tried to stay on BLM land or with friends and family. That's usually how we did it. 
Um, so we didn't spend a whole, we would stay in thousand trails for the two weeks because that was just a nice, that gives you a break. You have a washer and dryer there and full hookups and electric Let's and water. Let's just slow down and. Yeah, really take in the little area, but, um, but we definitely like to be on BLM land seeing, seeing things that, you know, are so unusual to you. That's how we did it. All right, well, let's find out how Dustin does it. RV parks, is that a go-to for you or do you usually stay at one location for a long time? What are your preferences? So, uh, I, first of all, I apologize for the background noise. They're, they're apparently cleaning this parking lot with a leaf blower. So hopefully you can't hear that too much. But uh, what, we, what we do is uh, probably a mix. We started out a lot in RV parks um, and we tended to be in the RV parks that uh, were uh, lots of amenities so like the koas and the jelly stones um but now i would say we do more off grid like boondocking kind of like what travis hit on uh so but we'll do either and we don't stay very long uh we usually end up staying sorry <laughs> loud loud area but we don't stay very long uh usually one to two weeks typically until this pandemic that slowed us way down. Now we've been spending multiple weeks at a time in the same spot. All right, well, I'm gonna go back to Aaron and Travis here for just a second to start on the next question. Um, and this is a little bit off topic. Kay is asking, is the only way of towing an AWD on a flatbed trailer? Does anybody know? So Aaron and Travis, do you know, is that the only way? I have no idea. I have not towed an all-wheel drive vehicle. <laughs> um, Dustin may. Dustin's a little more advanced on this stuff, so he may know. All right, let's pass it over to you, Dustin. <laughs> so um, what, what I'm assuming they're referring to is they have a drivable RV, so probably have a big Class A, and they're towing an all-wheel drive vehicle behind that. And I have a fifth wheel, so I do tow, uh, uh, but I, I don't tow a vehicle, I tow my trailer. So again, I've never researched that, I've never owned a uh, drivable. I think uh, next uh, round, we might want someone that drives a class A uh, to join us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we're gonna go back a little ways to the topic of where you stay here. Victoria has a question about parking. Uh, is it hard to find temporary parking for just two nights in every town you're visiting? It's hard for me to find them online. So Aaron and Travis, what do you think about this one? Oh, I think that probably would be a little tough to just come into a town and find a, a spot for two nights if you're not willing to find a boondocking area. Um, so, but if we were just doing a quick overnighter, we would stay in, in Walmarts and truck stops so that really is the easiest way to do it if you're if you're trying to get somewhere. Um, and a lot of people say they don't feel they they wouldn't feel safe doing that, and we've never felt safer. You know, pulling into a Walmart for the night and sleeping. There's lights, there's security. Um, we've never been bothered. We've never had issues. And so a quick night in a Walmart parking lot, and then hitting the road again in the morning. But two nights. Don't don't be yeah. that person that does two nights. Yeah, that's not, <laughs> not cool, in a bro. Walmart. <laughs> um, we typically, when we traveled, four nights was our minimum. We would pull into a spot and stay for four nights. Um, and so it's easier kind of to get it that way. Two nights would be tricky. Um, I would even try maybe Harvest Hosts um, mm -hmm. because I know that you can do a night or two on wineries and farms and stuff. So if Joel were here, maybe he could recommend Harvest Hosts and mm -hmm. that would work out better for you. Yeah. All right, Dustin, I'm going to let you add in here, too, for Victoria's question. Uh, hard for her to find these spots online. What do you think? So I, I actually would have, uh, like, that's exactly what I would do. I would probably do either Harvest Hosts or Boondockers Welcome. Um, I don't know that we do too many two-night stops either. Um, I would say even when we were moving really fast, we usually stayed at least three. Um, but uh, Boondockers Welcome uh, is usually a little bit more friendly than Harvest Host for multiple nights in a row and um, going and exploring. Typically when we're at a Harvest Host, which is another good solution for that, but we'll usually only stay one night at a Harvest Host. So if you wanted to stay a couple of nights, um, I know there are some Harvest Hosts that allow that, but I think Boondockers Welcome would be another good solution for that, which is similar to Harvest Host, but instead of businesses, they're people's homes. 
So if you are just joining us, either for the first panel or you're midway through the panel, Joel Holland is usually with us from Harvest Host. So that's the brand that we're shouting out here. If you go back and look at any of the previous panels, he has a lot of input and Harvest Host is also one of the brands that collaborated on that free activity bundle that you could go ahead and sign up for. I'll make sure to give you a little reminder of how to do that before we close our panel session. Uh, but we'll get back into some questions here. Just wanted to let you all know if you're joining us exactly who we're talking about with Harvest Host and Joel Holland. We miss him today, but you can see his face on the previous panels. Uh, let's move into a little more generic topic here. And it's really just, do you have decorating ideas or interior upgrades to personalize your RV? And to bring it back to the topic we started on, is there a way that you can do that that lends to your work being your brand, your job, being a full-time job and living the RV lifestyle? So I'll send it to Erin and Travis first. So in the packet that's available, we did the top five things to make your RV feel more like a home. And so I think just putting your touch and your personality and um, try not to go off of what everyone else is doing, but really go with what you like and you enjoy. Um, did that answer the question? <laughs> <laughs> I would say so. It was a very general question and I'm going to pose the same question to Dustin next. <laughs> Any decorating ideas or upgrades in the interior so that you can personalize your RV to your work or home needs? So I would say the the first thing that I would look at for that, sorry, I might have just talked over you, but that's my internet connection. I wasn't trying to, <laughs> but I, I would say look for hollow spaces in your RV. There's a lot of times areas that are, they might have like a wire in there or uh, a gas line that you can strap to the back um, or, or something where they carved out a big open space that's just dead area and utilize that for something. Like I was able to, above my power box, I was able to cut a big hole uh, where we were able to store our shoes, like a cabinet sized hole in the wall. Uh, and and I, we were also underneath our stove, able to take out just uh, a panel and underneath there, there was a little bit of wiring. I should have wrap that up, screw it to the back so it was out of the way, but then we had a nice area underneath our um, stove or our oven that we were able to utilize for for more storage. So that would be my suggestions. When it comes to actual decorating, um, I'm not that fussy, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think also finding space that can be multi-purpose used. So if you, I know that our kids bunks in our first rig, um, Travis built boxes at the end of them that had a big fold down door that turned into a desk space. So their bed also functioned as like a desk space where they can color and draw and do all sorts of work. And so finding spaces in your RV that serve more than one purpose um, really utilizes, you know, the space as a whole. Okay. We're going to move on to a very specific question. So we're going away from general, super specific. We've got a guest that has a question um, here. I'm just gonna read it completely straight. I'm going full time and I need to have accommodation for a large V twin cruiser. I'm 90% sure I'm going to go with a fifth wheel but I'm not convinced of having a toy hauler. There are a few options of a carrier off the fifth wheel. Any suggestions? Uh, let's stay on Travis and Aaron first if you have any suggestions here. Uh, so the rig we actually live in is a fifth wheel that is a toy hauler with only half of it being the toy hauler bunk for, for a motorcycle. It's specific for that. Um, so I would suggest that. That's pretty simple, but it is a really big trailer. It's like 36 feet. It's huge. Um, and we don't use it for that, but... No. So that's the only thing I know. I know that you, know, you could go with a smaller trailer and also attach... Uh, uh, a lift on the back that you put your motorcycle on. Um, I don't really know. I've never, I've never taken that, but it's kind of tough. You got to just do what, you know, what you're going to want to do with that one. I'm not sure. All right. Well, let's see if Dustin has any suggestions here. What do you think, Dustin? So I, I do not have a motorcycle either. Uh, but the things that I would have you uh, probably look at is uh, if you're putting on the back of a fifth wheeler on the, the 
the haulers. Um, I'd make sure that you have that properly welded or, uh, again, I'm not super familiar with it, but I do know that the, the bumpers, if you're attaching to the back, uh, sometimes I, I'm pretty certain for a motorcycle, you're going to have to have that custom made or custom welded. Um, yes. however, uh, you can also triple tow in some States. So I know some people will tow like a boat. I'm from Minnesota and you see it all the time. It's illegal where they can have a truck, a fifth wheel and a boat behind it. So, uh, you could probably get a trailer, uh, with a, a motorcycle on the back, depending on where you're at, you can't do that everywhere. Mm -hmm. All right, so pay attention to details like that for sure. Uh, we have a couple more minutes left to get to a few more questions. So if something is uh, on your mind, please drop it in relatively quickly here so that I can get to as many as possible. I'm gonna move on to the next question here, but keep my eye on that chat box as we get close to the end of our final panel. Uh, this next question is, any tips for affording the RV lifestyle. So I'll send that right back to Dustin. Do you have any tips for affording that lifestyle? So uh, I do. Uh, it, it's based on your your choices. I know people that do this at a very, very low cost. Um, there's families out there that stay primarily in the desert. They essentially have their food costs and any entertainment. And I mean, they can keep their budget very, very low. Um, I know other families that, that travel and it, it's all about the experience and they're, they're doing huge excursions on a regular basis and probably spending seven, eight, nine thousand dollars a month. So I would say as far as being able to afford it, um, you could make any budget work. It just depends on your lifestyle. So uh, just make sure you're living within your means. Don't, don't think that you're going to go see every excursion if you're on the budget where you can't do that. So I guess your your behavior is more the budget than it is the actual lifestyle. Okay, how about you, Erin and Travis? Do you have any tips for affording the RV lifestyle? I think it's definitely trying to remember that it's not a vacation. Um, if you're going to RV full time all the time, you are not on vacation. You are living in your RV, and so budgeting um, when it comes. To, in our first month, like we ate out all the time. We were, you know, moving a lot and eating out. And it was a quick reminder that like, wait a second, like we have a kitchen, we need to be cooking at home, eating at home. Um, and so then you kind of find like within your budget, um, living within your means. And, and if that means like buying a smaller used trailer versus a brand new, you know, RV that's going to take up most of your budget, you wouldn't want to do that. Um, and then there's a lot of free things so taking advantage of free activities and free things to do in national parks and monuments and those sorts of things. Um, hikes, those are free. And so you can make it work on just about any budget, you know, and doing RV parks versus boondocking. Um, it's, it's doable on any budget. Okay, we have a question coming in here from Jay. And Jay is asking, do you have any ideas for testing out the full-time RV lifestyle before diving right in? So Aaron and Travis, to you first. Rent an RV. Well, rent it and go camping <laughs> and see if you can handle that. But yeah. But also I, I'm a, it takes a while to adjust to the lifestyle. So I would be worried that if you just say, well, I'm gonna test it for a month, that month is not going to be a good example of what it really becomes. Um, it took us about eight months of doing it full time. Eight months? To really understand how much we enjoyed it. I mean, well, it took, before we headed to Florida, you know, and there's a time where just the adjustment, the adjusting to it is, uh, can be pretty yeah. tough. So give yourself time. I, I would just, dedicate a year to trying it and, and and at the end of that year really reevaluate your and life. I think and like find your why like why you're doing this why are you going into the RV life full time and stick to that why and that's a constant reminder and a good motivator as to you know continuing to do it because it's not easy it is a different lifestyle and it's a huge adjustment but at the in the end it is so worth it which is why we're back into it is because to us it is completely worth it um but definitely camp try it um see if it is for you 
Okay, Dustin, I'm going to send it over to you. Do you have any ideas for testing out the full-time RV life before jumping in? So uh, I would say I would I'd probably rent one. I, I agree, like uh, outdoorsy or RV share, uh, rent one, go up there, Cruise America, whatever you rent in. Um, that would probably be a good first taste to see if you like it. But as far as lifestyle, um, even if you just pack up your car and you go uh, Airbnb to Airbnb on a 30 day road trip or something like that. Um, uh, granted, you won't be in an RV, but you're, you're getting an idea of what the mobile lifestyle is like and what it's like to be on the road and not have the same people around you to rely on if you need a babysitter and stuff like that. So if either rent an RV or at least get out there and travel and, and uh, go Airbnb hopping or something like that. So. Okay, so what I'm going to do here with this final little bit of time that we have is I'm going to give each of you a chance for any final thoughts that you want to share with the viewers here on the panel today. And also anything extra you want us to know about your brand, anything that's a burning passion that you haven't been able to answer a question on uh, before we sign off for this last panel. And I'm going to bring it to Dustin first. So Dustin, anything that's left that you want to share with the viewers out there today? Um, that's how that's a hard one to answer. I, I always I never know anything. <laughs> I like specific questions. Um, so I, I guess I, I don't have anything like big picture. But as far as full time families goes, I guess I would like to maybe kind of cover how that works. So again, we're, we're a whole uh, crew of full time families that we live in our we travel uh, all over the country. Uh, most of us a uh, year round, a lot of us uh, six months or more uh, a year where we'll travel in our RV uh, and spend that time. Uh, we do a lot of events, a lot of rallies. And if it is something that you would like to participate in, um, head to our website, fulltimefamilies.com. Uh, you can do a one year membership. Uh, for $65, it will give you all of the resources that are inside. Uh, we do have Facebook groups. We have free Facebook groups and we have a bunch of member ones that are specific to different interests. Um, for example, we have one that's all about boondocking. We have them for filmers uh, like YouTube channels or bloggers. So we have all kinds of special interest groups where you can really connect with other members that have the exact interests that you have. So I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to talk about full-time families. Absolutely. I want to make sure you have the chances to uh, let us know where to find your brands before we say our final goodbyes. So I'm going to send it right over to Aaron and Travis for the same thing. Anything else you want to share with us? And then also, please do tell us a little bit more about your brand and anything you'd like us to know about it. I think if you're, um, if you're jumping into the RV lifestyle or you want to, I think our best suggestion is to just do it. Just, just do it. Like, a lot of people are like, well, I don't know when the good time is, and I don't know if it's something we'll love. And if you don't know, just do it. I remember my mom telling us in the beginning, if you don't love it, you can always come back. Like, you always can come back here and settle back down. And so having that in the back of my mind, knowing like, okay, if this is something we don't love, if this is terrible, we can always go back and settle down. And we found that we loved it, and it, it was fantastic. And then you find your community, and you realize how even more special, you know, the RV life is. Yeah, I think that's a huge thing. Don't don't overthink it too much because that'll that'll stop you from doing things right. if you think too much before it. Um, don't look at too many YouTubes and all of that stuff. Sometimes you just have to go for it. Um, if you can't convince yourself to do it, don't rely on something else to convince you. You know. So yeah. But as far as our our company and our brand, and I mean, essentially, it's just our life played yeah. out through images. There's not really anything beyond that. Um, if you follow us on Instagram at Our Lively Tribe, you can find our kids and our family and kind of our everyday life of living in a fifth wheel. And um, and then if you follow us at Our Lively Tribe RV Renovations, you'll find all of the custom work that Travis does and you'll see him in the shop every day and you'll see the projects that we're working on. And we currently have two RVs that we're renovating for two different families right now. And it's just, it's so fun. And it's fun that we get to be creative and that we get to work together every day and all be together. And it's just a different way of living. Um, and we love it. So 
thanks for letting us join and share our brand and uh, yeah, share our lifestyle because we love it. And so I think the same as Dustin, like we love this lifestyle. And so sharing this lifestyle is just, you know, a passion for us. Yeah, that's, yeah. We're passionate about it the same way Dustin is. So, awesome. Yeah. Well, I am going to give yeah. a quick shout out to Harvest Homes, which is Joel Holland's brand that uh, he's been a panelist on the previous three panels. Harvest Homes is his brand, and that is also uh, something that you should check out most definitely. I know he couldn't make it today, but he would have lots to say about that brand. I'm sure if he were here, uh, go back and look at those other panels if you want to see more of his input. Uh, this has brought us, though, to the very end of our final panel. So I'm going to wrap things up here with a little reminder about that activity sheet bundle. You've heard about it. It's been a collaboration between all three of the brands for the panelists that you see here and RV Repair Club. And it's very simple and easy to download. It includes an RV cookbook, camping meal planning sheets, coloring pages, crossword puzzles, an RV camping guide, and tips for your RV. All you need to do to download it is to click the banner underneath the video player or the link that is in the description. So once again, I'm going to say thank you to our panelists. Thank you to Aaron and Travis of Our Lively Tribe. Thank you to Dustin Schroeder of Full Time Families. And also a thank you to Joel Holland of Harvest Homes. I'm gonna give them a final chance to just say goodbye, give a quick wave. Bye guys. And then I am going to say thank you, all of you, for viewing these panels. My name is Leah Zayner, and on behalf of all of our panelists, thank you for joining us, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.